Hey, welcome back to Harvest Church here on YouTube. We're so glad you decided to join us today. If you would do us a favor, give us a Christmas present and get us to 750 subscribers by clicking that subscribe button. You can also go to Facebook and Instagram, harvest.247. Love for you to follow us on over there as well. We are right in the middle of Christmas series and um, called the Villains of Christmas. And basically this is it. It's there are these behaviors and attitudes that can steal Christmas from us and that we find them in villains of some of our favorite Christmas movies. So we thought we'd have a little bit of fun with this series and uh, do a little Christmas theme and also hopefully give you some practical teaching. Well, we all, um, you know, you'll shoot your eye out. Most people know where that that comes from a Christmas story. Um, back on Thanksgiving Day, if you were watching the Superstation TBS, they ran that movie 24 hours in a row. So you could have watched that over and over and over again. Of course, it's a, it's a Christmas classic. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I actually really like it, think it's funny. And, um, but in that movie, there's a villain, and his name is Scott Farkas. Um, Scott Farkas is introduced to Ralphie, Randy, Schwartz, and Flick after walking home from school, and Scut pushes Randy, which he bullies and scares the kids, and Grover Dill, Dill scares them too. Scut pulls Schwartz's arm back, and Grover lets out the final scare, and then, of course, all the kids run away. Kind of a silly scene, but Scut is a bully, and no matter our age, we have all dealt with bullies. As a matter of fact, you could probably think back to when you were a kid playing on the playground, walking home from school, on the school bus, whatever it may be, that there was a bully that you had to deal with. Maybe you were the bully and you step back and say, man, I was kind of a mean to those kids back then. But you know what? Bullying just kind of never stops, right? I mean, the things that we see in kids and the things we deal with as kids, a lot of times we have to deal with them as adults. And as bullies, maybe as kids, it was maybe a little bit more physical. Um, but as we get older, they become maybe a little bit more verbal, right? Bullies, they, they kind of bully us with their words. They bully us with their attitudes. They, they, they post things that aren't nice. And, and people just try to bully people, right? So you've got these different types. You've got your physical bullies that are that are bully people physically. You've got your emotional bullies. And we're going to talk about a little bit of an emotional hostage next week uh, that try to bully people with their emotions. But then most people today are verbal bullies. And when I talk about verbal bullies, it's you know, what they say, it's what they type. Um, and, they, and they try to be critical. They try to tear people down, make fun of, make them let, feel less than them, and also play with their mind. You know, there's that saying that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Well, that's actually not true. As a matter of fact, a lot of times words can wound us far more than anything physical can wound us as well. If somebody says something to us that isn't kind, if they say it the wrong way, um, if they're overly critical or something like that, uh, words can actually hurt us. We have all been surrounded by bullies. And here is the reality. The most hateful bullies that I have ever encountered are bullies that actually are inside the church. Um, I have had bullies like verbally uh, uh, assault me in ways that have just been really crazy that I didn't I haven't found outside. As a matter of fact, I was a youth pastor one time and I took the youth room and I changed the color of the youth room. Um, and I thought that I was able to do that because it was the youth room, but a lady in the church didn't like that. And uh, so she kind of uh, verbally assaulted me in the fellowship hall. And she said, I would fire your blank a long time ago in the middle of everybody. That is an actual true story. And there's been so many others that are like that. And you and I know that there are bullies. We have them in our office place. You know, maybe our boss is a bully. You know, maybe we're, we're afraid to make a misstep because we know our boss is going to verbally assault us. You know, maybe one of our kids is a bully or one of our parents is a bully or our spouse is a bully or a neighbor is a bully or one of our friends is a bully. And we dare not cross them because eventually we are going to get verbally assaulted. And that's because the majority of bullies, especially as you get older, bully us with their mouth. And so the title of the message is How Not to Be a Bully This Christmas or How Not to Be a Scut Farkas This Christmas. Because here's what we know. As we go off and we're getting ready to travel and we go see our uncle or we go see our friends or we go see our, our grandparents or we go, we have the tendency to encounter bullies and bullies can steal Christmas. So we don't want to be a bully. 
and we want to know how to not be a bully or how to handle bullies this Christmas. So if you have one in your family or in your neighborhood, you can send them this message and say, hey, Merry Christmas. Here's a message for you. Well, the Apostle Paul actually talks a little bit about bullies, and he talks about it from the perspective of uh, our mouths. And he does it in Ephesians 4, 29, just one simple verse that has a lot packed into it. He says this, he says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only as such is for building up as it fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So this may be um, is one of those things that you've heard before. Maybe your mom said it, your grandmother said it. You know, if you can't say anything good, don't say it at all. I think the Apostle Paul would say, if you can't say anything encouraging, maybe you should think twice and not say it at all. Don't be a scut farkas. But here's the problem with our words and what Paul is talking about with corrupting talk. One of the problems that we know is this, is with words, is that actually words come from our heart. Um, Matthew 12, 34, Jesus is talking to Sadducees and Pharisees, and he says this, he calls them, he says, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? From out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what Jesus says is that what comes out of our mouth is actually coming from our heart. He says it in another way in Matthew chapter 15 when his disciples are eating with unclean hands and the Sadducees and Pharisees are like, oh my gosh, they're going to be contaminated. They're going to make us unclean. You can't do that. And Jesus says whatever it goes into the mouth enters the body and then comes out of the body. Let your imagination go there. But whatever comes out of the mouth actually comes from the heart. And from the heart comes evil desires such as um, anger and slander and, and all of these various types of things, lusts and greed and all that. And so when Paul is talking about let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, I think if you piece together some other scriptures He's trying to give you an alarm to say, look, the corrupting talk that comes out of your mouth actually comes from a heart. It's a deeper issue than what is just coming out of your mouth. And that bullying is a deeper issue than just trying to, to make somebody feel bad. It's a problem. And if you have that problem, if you are a verbal bully, it's coming from your heart. And so here's, here's what I would say. A, a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. That if, if you are a person that is incapable of encouraging, if you are a person that is always critical, if you're a person that, that has this corrupting talk that is divisive and all these types of things, it's coming from a foul heart. And that's something that this Christmas you got to take inventory with because that foul heart has the ability to ruin Christmas for those closest to you. And so let's talk a little bit about what Paul is saying. He says, no corrupt talk, verse 29. Rotten communication is different than edification. Corrupt was used in ancient Greek for rotten fruit and other spoiled food. So when Paul is talking about let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, he's like, let no spoiled talk come out of your mouth. Let no rotten fruit come out of your mouth, meaning that if we have corrupting talk, it's like eating rotten fruit. We don't want to do that. So repulsive language is out of the character of a person who is following Jesus. That means whether we use tons of curse words or we speak you know, off-color um, you know, jokes or whether we're just using our mouth to just bad mouth, slander, and tear down other people. All of those things are in, in the realm of that. And here's the thing, all of us do them. All of us have the, the tendency to do these types of things. And so trash talking, coarse jesting, filthiness, uh, you know, all of these types of things, slanderous communication, Paul's like, let it not come out of your mouth because a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. But he says, let the, the heart or, or the mouth be building up, meaning what you say, let it benefit others. The phrase literally means for the edifying of the need edification to take place where there is need, edification for meeting spiritual needs, being constructive communication, and encouraging, uplifting, and instructive is the standard. I've met so many people that will say, I'm going to speak the truth in love, and they just spit daggers at people. 
And somehow they believe that I'm just speak because I'm speaking the truth and I'm doing it. I, I can I can cloud that with love regardless of how bad it hurts someone. Paul, the apostle Paul is like, yeah, speak the truth in love. But when we speak the truth in love, let's do so in a way that is encouraging, that is edifying, not that is critical and is tearing down people. It should be something that we come alongside someone and say, hey, I noticed this. Hey, I, I just want to encourage you in this. Hey, I, I don't want to tear you down. I just, I, here's, here's what we're doing. You know, one of the hardest things for me that I've had to learn in a position of leadership is I can communicate, how I communicate the message depends on how it's oftentimes received. And I can communicate things in a certain way and still be speaking the truth in love, but it's actually received well. It's like, um, it's like seasoning, right? If you go to cook something, you put some salt, you put some pepper on it, um, it you, put, you put some you know, a rub on it, because when people eat it, you want it to be pleasing to the taste, right, as they're trying to digest it. The same is true with our words. That's what Paul's saying, that, that, that when we are edifying, even if we're trying to do some correction, if we're edifying, it's like we're sprinkling some salt, some pepper, some, some rib rub, or, or maybe some sugar on our words. And it's not that we're not speaking the truth, but we're doing it in a way where someone can receive it, where, where it's sweet and pleasing to it, where they can say, okay, I get it, without being anger or tear, ang, you know, having anger or tearing people down. Because a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. And then he says this, Paul, he says to give grace to all those that hear. And I think this is super important. Your words impact those that they are intended for. And your words also impact those that it is not intended for. How you speak about people, what you say in public has an impact on people. One of the things that Sarah and I aren't aware of is because we do, when we have an, a disagreement or we have an argument, it impacts how we speak to each other, the tone we speak with each other, and what we say to one another. It doesn't just have an impact on each other, but our three boys hear it as well. And our three boys pick up on what we say, how we say it, and therefore that tone, that tenor, the words that we use, it has an impact on them. And it's not just teaching them how to say something, but it's also showing them, oh, if I use a, core, a harsh tone with my wife, then they can use a harsh tone. And so one of the things we have to do is that we have to understand that we have to give grace to those who hear, that we are actually modeling how we handle disagreements. We're actually modeling what we think about people, and it actually has a resounding impact on other people. So when Paul's talking about our speech should give grace to people, our speech should have an element of grace to them and be instructive and constructive because blunt facts just spilled out with the mouth from a different place has the ability to destroy relationships because a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. As I read earlier, Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There's always a connection between the heart and between the mouth. Scott Farkas is a bully, some, some character in a movie filmed years and years ago. But the problem is, the deeper issue is that we can look at his actions about, man, that's not good or that's not great or they can be funny to us. But really, it comes from a bad heart. And for us, that is, should be a very worrisome and sad thing. And the people around us, whether they're relatives, whether they're neighbors, whether they work with us, whether, whether they're in our home home, that have a bad mouth or a foul mouth, it's not just about what they say. It's about the place that it comes from. And so as we get into Christmas and we get closer to Christmas, we get closer to traveling, we get closer to hosting families. We get closer to it. My encouragement is begin to take evaluation of your heart. And is there anger in it? Is there jealousy in there? Is there greed in there? What is in the heart that can spill out through the mouth and actually be a villain to other people this Christmas? And understand that a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. 
And we don't want to be bullies because you can't be a bully and be joyful about Jesus coming. So a foul mouth comes from a foul heart. Take inventory of your heart, not other people's heart, your heart, and say, God, what is in my heart that can begin to get cleared up? What is in my heart? Is there anger? Is there jealousy? Is there some sort of resentment built in there? And help me understand that, discover that, and forgive me for it and help me deal with it so that this year I'm not a Scott Farkas and that the words that I speak are going to give grace to those people. They're going to be building up to people, my family members and the people that I'm sharing Christmas with. God bless you.